it's the uh, <laughs> B-roll. <laughs> Welcome to the Mojo Show. Yoga and everything else you need to live a good life and get your mojo working. Hey, Mojo Mob. Let's come together to discover tips, master resources, create ideas, and take actionable steps to become highly effective and successful mojo masters in everything we do. Start living the balanced, happy, fulfilling lifestyles of your dreams today and the rest of your days. And now your hosts, Jean Marie and Scott Johnson. It's the Mojo Show, episode number 61. And you will see, if you are watching the beautiful video, that I'm here with the lovely Jen Fry. <laughs> Jen Fry is in, is in visual form only. <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> and of course, that we're still here in Honolulu at Blue Startups. We'll be here till February, so get used to it. <laughs> I apologize for my voice. I'm a little bit under the weather, but I still wanted to make it here to do our interview this week with Lisa Simmons. Lisa is one of the newest teachers in the Mojo Member Library, and she is one of our instant favorites. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, we she's love. a runner, which I identify with. Yeah, definitely. Her, her yoga for runners is is one of our, our regular faves around here. Thanks. So um, she she is a multi multi talented woman, as you will discover in this interview this week. And um, we're just very excited to have her with us. So without further ado, let's get into the show. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Mojo Show. I am Jean Marie, and here with me I have the lovely Jen Fry, as always. <laughs> and if you guys are watching with us this week at mymojoyoga.com slash episode 61, you will see that we have a very special guest with us today, Lisa Simmons. Welcome to the show, Lisa Simmons. Thanks. Lisa is one of our newest teachers in the Mojo community, and she brings us a delightfully diverse array of practices from Yoga in a Hurry, which we saw recently in our free video Friday, all the way to Yoga for Runners and Yoga for Insomnia and Relaxation, and many, many, many other wonderful practices. You have been prolific right off the bat <laughs> in the Mojo Library, and we really appreciate your practices there. They've come to be some of our instant favorites here at at Mojo headquarters, and I know our members love them as well. Um, so Lisa, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be doing what you do now? Yeah, well, like most teachers, it's not a natural progression, I think, to be a yoga teacher. I worked full-time as a nurse for a really long time, and I worked with cancer patients. And after a couple of years full-time, I was struggling a lot always stressed out and became the most miserable person, I think, on the face of the planet, <laughs> only to my coworkers and my friends in my life. Yeah. So I decided, you know, I, I need to pick something up to help relieve my stress. And surprisingly, at that time, it was not yoga. I started running, oh. which brought me a lot of relief. But at the same time, it didn't help a lot of the things that was happening I guess, inside my body that I couldn't relieve just through running. Mm. So one of my friends asked me to go to yo a yoga class with her. Not an instant connection. I mean, I didn't love it at first. It's different. It's quiet. You can't talk to people traditionally in a studio. <laughs> I was like, what is this? I hate it. But <laughs> for some reason, I just kept going. And I remember this one class that I went to. The teacher took us through a guided meditation while we were in Shavasana at the end of class. And you were, we were watching as our eyes were closed, this golden orb coming out of our solar plexus in our abdomen, oh, wow. uh, just taking sort of our ego out of our body. Mm. I mean, we hold a lot of that in that area of our body. And I remember nothing after that other than when we woke up from Shavasana, I was crying and I was like, wow. what is going on? And I think that was the first time I really let go in my practice. And I knew from then on that it needed to be a part of my life more than just attending a studio. So I found a teacher that I had connected with while I was working a night shift, just searching the internet, working a night shift, decided I'm, I'm going to do my teacher training. And the girls at work were like, yeah, just do it, book it now. Because we all make our best decisions when we're overtired on a night shift. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, yes, I'm going to do my 200-hour teacher training 
in a thir- in 30 days. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to jump right in. And I did it and I never really looked back. I mean, that those 30 days, I think, changed my life in a way that people can't relate to unless you've gone through it yourself. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I was really surprised to learn that you're an oncology nurse. I mean, that's not um, a very common uh, profession. <laughs> how, how did you come into to that calling? I mean, it, it must be a calling for you. How did yeah. you come into that? I honestly had it suggested to me. I mean, I've always struggled going through high school with what, what do I want to do for the rest of my life? You know, there's all of these things. And going through high school, you don't really learn how to pick what you should do for a career. No. And I had a friend's mom say to me, you know, you seem like a caregiver. I think that you could be a good nurse and there's so many opportunities. Maybe you should just do that. And I applied and I got in to a great university and I did it. And I never thought twice about it. It just seemed second nature. I mean, now when I look back at my nursing career, I I don't work full time anymore as a nurse. Right now I'm in the United Kingdom and I'm Canadian. So I'm not working as a nurse here. So we're not sure how long we'll stay. But uh, my transition from full-time to part-time was really what let me get going with yoga teaching and having that be more of a practice in my life. That's really interesting. I, I wonder, you know, if in the timeline of how, how, you know, you came to yoga along with being a nurse, if, if your yoga influenced your nursing and on the flip side, if your nursing influenced your, your yoga teaching? Yeah, I, well, definitely, because I, I found through my yoga teacher training that the reason I was having such a hard time working as a nurse and why I was miserable was because I, I couldn't differentiate from what I was feeling and what everyone else was feeling around me. Right. It was like I was overwhelmed with feelings from my patients and feelings from their families and feelings from miserable coworkers as well that just are overworked and you want to be a caregiver to everyone but you can't be there 24 Mm 7 and when I went home I was like why am I feeling crappy all of the time and my yoga practice really allowed me to realize okay well the everything you're feeling right now is is not yours so you just need to put it aside and that was when you're really able to go into a room and be with the patient and okay, okay, these are your feelings. I'll be with you for them. And you can talk about whatever you want. But when I leave this room, I'm leaving it with you. Mm. And same on my yoga mat. I mean, I think that's what makes it difficult teaching online is because when you're a caregiver as a nurse and as a teacher, a lot of teachers are caregivers. We can feel when we're in a a live class where you have students in front of you, what they're feeling. If someone is having discomfort in their neck, you can see that. Mm -hmm. Or if someone's having an emotional moment in a pose, then you know to just, you know, give them a moment or maybe touch them a different way if they're comfortable with that. But you can't do that online, which is tricky, right? I mean, you don't know what they're feeling. I think that's a, it's a challenge for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, how... You, you, you've been teaching with us online for a couple of months now. You've given us quite a yeah. few um, wonderful practices. How did you strike a balance with that with that challenge? Because I know for me, that's one of the biggest challenges personally, um, making videos for, for online use is, is not being able to, you know, sort of modify what I want to present based on what's presented to me as a teacher to, to teach to. So how do you strike a balance with, with you know, presenting yoga for for healing or whatever it is we're trying Mm -hmm. to accomplish and not having our students right in front of us. Yeah, I think that you have to stop worrying about everyone because not everyone (laughs) is going to love what you're providing for them. But for me, I, I teach in a way that I want to give people something that has helped me before. Mm. So I I'm a, a terrible sleeper. <laughs> so <laughs> yoga for insomnia is something that I needed. Yoga for runners is something that I still always need. And I mean, when I go through poses, I know that even if you've never done yoga before or it's your 100th class, some part of my teaching will be beneficial to you. 
whether you hold it for longer, whether you just move your body in a different way, even just diff- by saying different cues. I think cueing has <laughs> definitely changed by just teaching online because you get used to doing your own practice as well. And when you're not in front of students, you can't see them. So cueing is different, you know, just a simple, okay, well, are you holding your neck in a different way? Mm -hmm. Are your legs so tight and so tired right now that your shoulders are way up here? Like what's happening? So I think a lot of focus now teaching online is for people to feel what their body is telling them. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that, um, you know, Jen, here's a lot of questions from from new teachers and teachers who are interested in in teaching online. You know, what are some of the biggest challenges you hear people bring to you and and maybe obstacles they have to to getting started even? I would say probably the biggest challenge that I I come across with interacting with teachers is um, just how to get started, because I mean, I don't necessarily even think that's necessarily with just filming videos. Mm-hmm. I think in life, the biggest challenge with anything that we want to take <laughs> on is just getting started, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, when you decided that you wanted to go into filming classes and do, doing things online, how did you get started? Like, what was that moment that you were like, I need to do this. This is how I'm going to do it. Oh, my goodness. It's such a struggle. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. It's not easy because you think, okay, I'm just going to set up my phone. And then everything's going to be fine. You know, I, at first I invested in a a transmitter and a receiver to Mm -hmm. wear a microphone. Oh my gosh. It was like, I I thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown. I'm like, (laughs) all right, well, I, I need to take a moment and be alone with myself and just think about what's going wrong. (laughs) Because you, you look at, I think the first thing everyone does is they open up their computer and they Mm -hmm. Google how to teach a yoga class online. What do I need? So of course I did that. And I mean, I'm, I'm friends with one of the other teachers that you have online. Yeah. Cassandra, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's awesome. So she helped me a little bit as well. And I'm doing one of her online business courses now too. Nice. She's yeah. She's a great resource, but I, I figure right now, I was I jumped in way too fast. I thought that I needed everything right at the beginning, and you you don't need to do that. I found starting smaller is always better, less overwhelming, and less expectations for yourself. Mm. You definitely learn how to edit videos on your computer, uh, and I need a new. <laughs> It's not hard, everyone, (laughs) if you are thinking of teaching online. It's not difficult to make a video online, but it really makes you question how patient you really are as a human. (laughs) Sure. There's there's so many new things to learn. Um, Yeah. You know, and and I know that as a yoga teacher, a lot of our yoga teachers don't just teach yoga. They have other jobs. You know, you're a nurse and uh, (laughs) people have, have plenty of other things going on in their lives. And so it can be it can feel overwhelming in the beginning to to have all of these new things to learn. But I just thought of it for myself as say, uh, another iteration of my teacher training. You know, we were all, as teachers, very excited to get into teacher training and learn all of these new things and dive in. And at times it seemed overwhelming, but it was totally worth the reward at the end. Okay. And so for me, that that really helped me was just thinking of it as another part of my training as a teacher. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot more, I'm a, much more relaxed now. I mean, I think I, I can't remember how many videos I have now, maybe nine or ten. Yeah. And I think each one becomes much easier to edit and just figure out what to do and how to actually work a program. Yeah. YouTube is your friend, everyone. If yes. you don't know how to do something, everyone <laughs> is a YouTube video about it. <laughs> yeah. That's probably one of my uh, my main tips for people when I'm talking to them in the you know forums is you guys need to be using YouTube because there's a tutorial on YouTube for everything. Yeah. Every program, every piece of equipment, there's a review, instructions, like it is an amazing resource. Yeah. And, and, you know, 
for for us here, I, we're really preparing um, a lot of new things for for teachers. So in the, in the new year, we'll have a lot of these resources in house, sort of a one stop shop for for anybody who's interested in teaching yoga and getting better at teaching yoga online. We're going to have a lot of these resources for all you guys um, within mymojoyoga.com, which is going to be rad because searching YouTube is fun but overwhelming, right? <laughs> yeah, because there is a thousand videos for one thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah and you don't necessarily have all day to watch all of them and figure out which one's the best one. No, you don't. I can't imagine still working full time and trying to do videos every week. It would be very overwhelming. And you don't want to be overwhelmed when it's something that you love. That's right. the worst. It ruins it for you. Yeah, it, it's not fun. It's It's hard to keep your passion going when it's not fun. Yeah. Um, so, you know, speaking of being overwhelmed, <laughs> we, we <laughs> featured your, your guest post this week on the blog all about slowing down. So you guys definitely want to go check that out. We'll link it up in the show notes, too, if you, if you have trouble finding it. But um, I really love that, that piece, especially for this time of year. I think it's very appropriate. Everybody gets sort of ramped up and extra busy in this time of year. But I think it's important to remember to slow down and take care of ourselves. Can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration for that piece for you? I think it also goes back to wanting to do everything at the exact same time. Mm. <laughs> because we can't do that as humans. We're one person and we only have one life. And if you're not happy, then people around you aren't going to be happy. And if you can't be happy, then you can't make other people happy. <laughs> it's yeah. like if you don't love yourself, you can't. You don't have love to give. Exactly. And I mean, I, I used to be, when I worked full time, I always wanted to do a million things. I've always been that type of person. And yoga brought that more to light. I think that I'm never going to be able to be satisfied if I want to do a thousand things at the all in the same month, all in the same week, all in the same day. I mean, we can be good at one or two things and offer that to the world. And that's enough for right now. Absolutely. Right? I mean, teachers that you can tell when a teacher is giving way too much of themselves because mm. they, they're, they look exhausted, they teach exhausted and I mean, that's what our world is today, especially around the holidays. Like you said, it's a busy time and you have more parties to go to. You have more gifts to buy if you do that. There's there's just so many things going on. And I mean, giving time for yourself and really realizing that slowing down is the most beneficial thing you can do for yourself. I mean, one thing a day is what I what I do now minimum one thing a day that I want for myself whether it's just my meditation yeah nice that's a great practice mm -hmm. um, you know I, you mentioned that you're a runner um, and Jen is is a great runner I, I try to run every now and then Jen sort of keeps me running you know a couple of times a year but <laughs> <True>. <laughs> It's not for everyone. She's, she's a fantastic runner. She just doesn't do it frequently. Yeah, I, I enjoy running once I get started. Running is one of those activities that somebody's kind of got to, like, drag me to, to go do. But once we get started, I can do half marathon, no problem. That's true. She's done too. Well, people probably don't want to hear that right now. <laughs> But I, so, so we're, we're a fan of, of your, your yoga for runners. Are, are you still running? Regularly? I do run occasionally more inside. I don't have the strongest quads and I have pretty tight hamstrings still. I carry a lot of my stress and tension in my lower back. So it's mm. made for some really tight hamstrings. So right now I run inside just to spare my knees. Because okay. um, if you're a new runner, usually, and you don't really do other activity, you find that your quads generally are what make your knees hurt. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for those of those of our audience who haven't done your yoga for runners class yet, what are some of some of the yogic tips you could give those of us who run out there for, say, you know, prepping ourselves before and taking care of ourselves after? Before, stretch, stretch, stretch. Afterwards, stretch, stretch, stretch. <laughs> <laughs> but but not a quick one. I mean, mm. I, that's what I did wrong when I first started running is I just thought, okay, well, 
oh, you know, I don't, I don't need to stretch. I'm in my 20s and I just don't need to. That was the biggest mistake I ever made because preparing your muscles and your ligaments and every other part of your body that it has strain when you run is a gift because my goodness gracious. But <laughs> when, when you stretch, I would say breathe into where you're stretching mm. because that's where you get the benefit. I right. Mean, a lot of teachers teach breathing techniques and I go through a lot of that in my classes, not just the yoga for runners, but um, most of them. Because if you're feeling an area of tightness in the runner class, we do a lot of frontline, backline stretching, mm-hmm. sending our breath to exactly where you feel tight because that's the only way you're going to be able to relax the area of tightness is if you send your breath there. It's a skill and you learn it with time can take visualization to send your breath there but it's worth every second you can get absolutely so when it comes to running and yoga what would you say has had the biggest impact on your running when it comes to your yoga practice a lot of the time I'm too tired to do a full practice when I get home from Mm -hmm. yoga I think that is, it's more of a mental thing. I feel like I've worked hard enough, Mm -hmm. but I always suffer when I don't stretch. So I usually give myself a five minute window to drink water and then sit down on my yoga mat (laughs) but and, and do stretches. So even if it's not a yoga class, I'll take a couple poses from my sequence. So say it's lunges on the wall, which are my least favorite pose to do me too but (laughs) but they're the best poses to do too absolutely especially if you hate them it's because you need them yeah worst um you know you're you're multi-talented as we're discovering of course diving deeper (laughs) into this interview and not only do you nurse people back to health and and teach them yoga and run (laughs) but you also make jewelry how did that come about? How did you learn to do this? I was doing that before any of all the other things. So <laughs> my mom is has always been more artsy and crafty, and you should see her at Christmas time. She makes wreaths that wreaths that look like horses. It's crazy. Wow. But we're, we won't highlight my mom in this because I think she'd be embarrassed. <laughs> But she, uh, I think, more aids in our creativity. Mm. Um, So I like beads and shiny things. So she was like, well, let's make bracelets. So I started when I was really little, probably 10, maybe even before that, just doing random things with tiny, tiny, tiny little seed beads. Oh, wow. (laughs) And it it evolved from then. I mean, through university, I, I went back to it as a way of stress relief Mm. uh, just to do something different because university is not the easiest thing to get through. Indeed. Yeah. Sold in like the university bookstore and took, took a break from it and then came back to it during my nursing career. So it always seems to be a creative outlet when I need stress relief. So I, I mean, creative outlets, whether it's movement or through creating, it's very rewarding. I would say. I mean, I do both and I love them both equally. And I can't see, I, I, I bash doing a million things, but I, (laughs) but I still do it. I guess many, many things Yeah. in moderation, I I guess I won't show you my table right now because I'm packing to go to Canada. (laughs) I have like, like my whole beating closet is on our kitchen table. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah. So I've, I've done a lot of uh, beadwork and jewelry making, I think, in the last two years when I stepped away from my nursing career and went part time there. I spend half my time now in the hospital, half my time splitting it between yoga and jewelry. Yeah. Lovely. That yeah. sounds like a very balanced life. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> I think a lot of people would aspire for a life like that. So good job. Because I don't have kids yet. <laughs> yes. Neither do we. Yeah. Yes. Kids change the equation. Um, that's what know. I hear. That's when you really need your yoga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. So in all of this that you do, um, you know, who would you say are your, your biggest influences 
right now that that other people could maybe draw some inspiration from as well? Mm, I'll go with a yoga teacher, which is a style of yoga that I was, I mean, I traditionally learned Hatha. That's what I trained to teach. Um, But the teacher that I was taught by, Louise Cameron, Mm. her teacher is on a forest and she teaches forest yoga. That's after her name, not the trees. Yes. A lot of people are... She's a powerful woman. (laughs) She is. I mean, and she's uh, honestly amazing. And if people haven't heard about her, she wrote a fabulous book actually called Fierce Medicine. Mm. And if you haven't read it, you should. But recently, in the last couple of years, her practice has changed a little bit. So it's been really interesting to watch her evolve Mm. and see the practice change a bit. I mean, she used to just be yoga practice and she used to be very, I wouldn't say cold but I guess hard when you do it a class with her she's very no you can do that now she's become a bit more soft Mm. there's not as many hard edges and Mm. she now has a partner that helps teach with her and there's a a new series out that I just started which has been really inspirational where she brings music and more ritual into her practice so she does a little bit of music before and afterwards and it's just amazing to watch her practice change because you change with them definitely yeah yeah um so so you mentioned her her book fierce medicine what um what other books are you reading right now that that other people might enjoy i love uh brene brown's book daring greatly me too it's so good (laughs) (laughs) I think it's her best one, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, it talks a lot about vulnerability and, I don't know, it's just magical to be able to speak from an area of vulnerability instead of having it as a weakness. And our society is riddled with people thinking that vulnerability is a weakness where it's it's not. Yeah. I think going back to that book is worth looking into if you've never heard of it before. Absolutely. And I know you guys can get that on Audible, too, if you're if you're into audiobooks. Um, I think that's a really powerful lesson, especially for yoga teachers, because, Mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned earlier that, you know, we can we can only really teach from from what we're working on right now and and what what we have learned and and know intimately. And so in a lot of ways, teaching yoga is making ourselves very vulnerable um, in front of groups of other people who are also making themselves vulnerable. Um, So so we have to find a way as yoga teachers to become very comfortable with vulnerability, not only in sharing it, but in nurturing it in others. So yeah, I, I love that book for sure. Yeah, it's really good. You can get Fierce Medicine as an audio book too. Oh, awesome. And I, I, well, I yeah, I had the paper <laughs> copy, and when I moved here, I was having a hard time parting with it, so I bought the audiobook, which I actually think is better because there's a, a meditation in it, which, I mean, most meditations you don't want to read, right? right. <laughs> it right. sort of defeats the purpose, and it goes yeah. through. It's a journaling meditation, so it's good to be able to have it on an audio. You can pause it and restart it, pause it and restart it, and it's her voice, which is pretty cool too the death meditation is something fierce wow. literally <laughs> we, we did it I think I halfway through our teacher training which was 30 days and we were there every day for eight hours mm. and with forest yoga I mean all of our practices we practice for one to two hours every day at the beginning of our our training and so we are pretty stripped down emotionally and physically just exhausted so doing the death meditation really gets your goals and your life in check (laughs) wow it's crazy yeah i think i'll move that to the top of my list now. <laughs> that would be good for where we're at right now. <laughs> yeah, in the, the business accelerator program we're doing right now, we are going hard every single day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so. you guys must be exhausted. I thought you were close to done, but you're not, are you? No, not even close. Yeah, we're like a third of the way through the program right yeah. now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, this program is kind of like like teacher training on speed. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Sometimes we get up at, you know, 
four or five in the morning and, and get going and we don't get home till nine, ten o'clock at night. Yeah. So we're definitely having to utilize a lot of our yoga um, and mm -hmm. our, our sort of daily rituals to to nourish ourselves through this process so that we don't get so drained. Um, yeah. I, I think it's really important, you know, and we have some pretty strong daily rituals that that we do. We, um, you know, I do a miracle morning every day. If you guys are familiar with Hal Elrod, I do a version of that miracle morning practice every day. And I know Jen has a lot of daily rituals that she does to take care of herself. Yeah, running has actually become very prevalent again in my life because here, <laughs> being in the city, being in Maui, you can't really go running at night unless you've got like a headlamp, and even then, it's still kind of sketchy. But being in the city it's light all the time yeah so we can get home like eight, eight or nine o'clock at night and i'm still like sort of amped from the day and i'll just go and run for like an hour and it's <laughs> so running has been like a huge thing yes <laughs> um what, what about you lisa do you have any uh daily rituals that sort of keep you on on top of your game other than yeah. yoga, of course so I don't do yoga every day anymore. It used to be one of my rituals, but it's not anymore. I really listen to what my body needs. And a lot of the time now, it's just uh, quiet and stillness because I haven't had so much of that in my life in a long time. Because we moved here and we don't have our network that we did in Canada. So at first it was it was more of a... A shock I think on my letting go of my independence type thing but it really has let me get in touch with what I need in my body and right now that's quiet and stillness so meditation has become a big part of my daily practice awesome yeah I, I think meditation and, and stillness is huge it's part of part of my daily ritual it's actually how I start every day um, and especially for for those of us who are in business you know yoga teachers I mean you don't hear from top people in business that they meditate for nothing you know I mean it's yeah. you hear from top performers all over the world that they meditate you have to meditate 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 and that's that's not just lip service I mean we we have to take care of what's going on between our ears um, there was just that article out recently, I can't remember if it was in the States, saying that they replaced detention time with meditation. Oh, yeah. I'll link that up in the blog. That was, that was a great story. I mm -hmm. love that. Um, and cool. it had a huge impact on, on the kids' behavior, much more so than uh, a punishment did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some people might think it's punishment at first. <laughs> right. Yeah. But once you get into it, you know, you, you start to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Awesome. Something to look forward to. Well, uh, you know, Lisa, I, I want to be respectful uh, of your time, and, and I know that we're probably going to get kicked out of here pretty soon from other people <laughs> in the in the accelerator. So, so we won't stay on too much longer. But I do want to remind everybody that this week, um, keep your eyes peeled. We're going to have for our free video Friday. We'll feature your yoga for insomnia and relaxation. We'll we'll feature that up um, for everybody just for the week on the Mojo blog. So keep an eye out on our social media for that coming up um, later this week. And of course, Mojo members always have access to that. Yeah. So whenever you need it in the middle of the night on you know. <laughs> you know, Christmas morning or something, whenever you need to relax and, and you may not be able to get to the studio, Lisa is there for you in the Mojo member library. Always. <laughs> um, and, and before we go, I, I do, I am dying to know because you are, of course, one of my new favorite teachers. And I know other people are dying to know what you might have up next for us in the Mojo member space. What are you working on? I just did a front line of the body class, Ooh. which I'm editing. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. Awesome. Yeah. We that forget about some of the spots up here. Absolutely. Yeah. We keep all of that very sort of crunched and, and protected all day. So it's mm -hmm. nice to work on that. Especially when it's cold. You guys don't have that problem over there. But. Well, we do in our own very, it's very relative. small way. It's relative. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We complain when it gets below 75, um, where yeah. most people roll their eyes at us. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's okay. Today there was frost on the ground for the first time. Ooh. Or maybe yeah. it was yesterday that was the first time. But sometime this week there was frost on the ground for the first time. And everywhere you go, people are like, oh, it's freezing outside. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I think back in Ottawa, there's a couple inches of snow on the ground. Oh, Ooh. 
gosh, I can't even imagine. I, I so freeze stay warm. in here in the air conditioning in, in Hawaii. It's terrible. Oh my <laughs> well, don't up. work too hard, ladies. Yeah, we'll bundle up. <laughs> uh, so uh, everybody, if you're listening, of course, on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you get your, your podcasts uh, audibly, be sure to head on over to the blog this week at mymojoyoga.com slash episode 61 to see this beautiful chat with these beautiful women here um, with me this week on the Mojo Show. Um, and of course, you'll be able to find all the links to everything that we mentioned in the show and links to connect with with Lisa to um, check out her jewelry and of course check out her classes in the Mojo member space. So be sure to check that out this week. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us, Lisa. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. Don't work too hard. No, we sh we shall <laughs> no. not. We have hard enough. We have office yoga yeah. this evening, so so we'll Ooh. we'll help everybody relax today. Awesome. <laughs> okay, thanks so much, Lisa. We hope to have you back on the show soon. Take care. Okay, bye everybody. Keep your mojo working. Thanks for hanging out with Jean Marie and Scott on the Mojo Show. If you're stoked on what you heard here, please be sure to subscribe to the show on iTunes and leave a little love note in the reviews, if you know what I'm saying. And remember, you can always listen to any and all episodes of the Mojo Show at mymojoyoga.com slash the mojo show. Until next time, keep your mojo working.